Welcome back to the Climber Dad channel. It is time to build stuff, a build, a how-to video. I know a while back I posted up this video on how to make your own systems board, lean-to climbing wall. It's also called a woody climbing wall because it's built out of wood and it's at your home. So you can build this. Now, what about the flooring? What about uh, underneath you? In, here in the gym, this has been a very popular item. It, people have been able to come in and really work and fine tune their skills. And all we've had for flooring is some leftover foam from the main portion of the gym that we put underneath it. And it's been completely exposed foam. It's right down here and it's starting to get beat up. We constantly monitor it so we don't have to worry about, you know, pets peeing on it or, you know, for the most part, kids ripping it up, although that is why we're covering it today. And I wanted to talk to you about how to do that and how to do your own flooring at home. Now, some of the other ways that you can accomplish this flooring is just getting crash pads. Just get a couple of crash pads that you're gonna have for going outside anyways and keep those underneath your systems board. That can be expensive. This is not really a cheap item either, but it's something that you can do, keep it in place, and have it look really nice. So I'm gonna cover how to do this today. The, the one thing that you need to find is a good source of foam. Now this is it's a fairly dense foam. We have it six inches thick. Uh, we get it from Wisconsin Foam. You can also get it from, I believe it's Factory. I, I'll have some links down in the description on some different places that you can get this foam. And I'll have the exact foam that I have down below. Although I'm not saying that it is the best foam, but it is holding up, this stuff is holding up pretty well. Now if you want to go with a larger wall than what we have here for our Lean 2 Systems board, you don't want to just do one layer of foam. It's best to do multiple layers. For our gym area, we actually have four different layers of foam. Uh, the top layer is going to be this white foam, which is a little bit more stiff then this foam, this is fairly spongy, versus this, which is thinner, but a little bit more stiff. And we have that on top to help distribute the weight and make it a little bit easier to walk on. But it's not a closed cell foam, so it can take that impact a lot nicer, and you don't have much of a shock from that sudden stop that uh, closed cell foam may give you. Now the cover for it, a lot of people are using this vinyl coated fabric. This is in 18 ounce. You can use either 18 ounce or 24 ounce. And what we are doing is heat welding it. Now for a high traffic area, such as our bouldering gym, it's actually those heat welds are starting to separate. Uh, you have to have them absolutely perfect. And even if you do have them perfect, there's still a chance for them to separate. It is much better than a stitched seam but they are separating. The best way to do it is something, uh, I don't know, Cascade does it the best. So if you wanna just cut, cut out all of the problems, go to Cascade, they, they're gonna be able to hook you up much better. But a heat welded seam is something that you can do yourself. You need to have a special heat gun it's not a ton of money. It is an investment, but it can be used for a lot of things. I'll have the link for the heat gun that I use. It's a fairly good heat gun. It works really well for this, and it's not a huge investment, but it is something that you're going to want to use for more than just this project. Otherwise, it's going to be way more expensive for you to do it yourself versus just going out and buying it. And the heat gun, you want to have that set at, if you get the one that I'm recommending, four and a half to five. You want to let it warm up, so turn it on, let it warm up, and then grab it and start going. What, when you are welding over the top of your foam, it is best to have a board underneath to capture some of that heat and dissipate it and protect it from 
melting your foam itself. So we'll do that except for the very last step, which is basically impossible to have a board in there unless you're going to leave it there, which might be okay as well. You could probably do that. We're not going to do it for this. All right, so now that we've got that cover completely done, you can see on here, there are a few ripples in places. Most of the seams are flat, and that's what you really want to pay attention to as you're doing this is try to get all of the seams flat. I have not found a good way to get those ripples out. So don't cry yourself to sleep at night because you've got ripples in your pad. Most of the seams are on the back side with a pad that is this size, which is 83 by 80. And that's just because that's what we had left over and it works really well for the lean-to wall systems board that we built. So we'll go ahead and flip that over, slide it up underneath the crack, or slide it up underneath the systems board, and come on, have fun. And hopefully it looks really nice. I think it will. Yeah. I hope that you like this video. If it gives you any inspiration to go out and build yourself, that means that I've done my job. Please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and if you're new here, subscribe. That means a lot to me. I'll see you right here next time on Climber Dad.